So now in this video we look at uh, one solution you may use for a problem some people run into. So these power banks are really common and uh, they're portable. That's the nice thing about them. And uh, sometimes you might want to build a little circuit on the go or whatnot. So it's a USB on there. So I got it plugged in and we got the wire there uh, with the alligator clips so we can plug it to the board and uh, power it. So really our only goal for this circuit is to keep this red LED lit. We don't want power to cut off. If uh, you don't have enough current being provided by these units, they automatically shut off. This one seems, I think, to stay on longer than other ones for like a minute. So I have the uh, timing of the flash of this LED uh, pretty slow right there. Um, now we don't want it to light longer than we have to. I think this is about how long I have to uh, light that with this power supply to prevent it from auto shutting off. So as long as it has to provide a higher amount of current every once in a while, it won't auto shut off even though the vast majority of the time it's providing a low enough current for it to auto shut off. So now I put an index card here so that bright flash won't be as obnoxious. There you can see it. And uh, it's going to be sped up. We have a 1 million ohm resistor now instead of 3.3 million ohm. So that determines how long it takes the capacitor to charge. You want that to be as long as possible because that's when the output is high. Since we're using a PNP bipolar junction transistor, I forgot to change the uh, transistor to 2N 2907 because um, we're switching more than 200 milliamps of current. It's brief though, so maybe we could get away with the 2N 3906, um, but that's a lot of current for a 2N 3906. 2N 2907 would be better. So sorry about the handwriting. I don't have the best handwriting. Um, we do need a fair amount of base current to turn the transistor on because we're switching a high current load right there. Uh, their gain goes down as you need more current. Um, but as you can see, we got plenty for this circuit because it's working. Um, but in case, uh, that's the charge time. Output's high and the transistor's off. So the more resistance, the longer it will take. And uh, with this power bank, I would use 3.3 uh, million. I didn't try higher, um, but uh, this did work. As you can see, it kept the power bank on. And uh, so the higher you can go, the better. But if it's uh, too high, it'll take too long, the power bank will turn off. Then you have to press the button to turn it back on and restart this process. So in case that's the charging high, it's off. And then uh, once this gets to two thirds supply voltage, charge up, then the output goes low as does pin seven. Connects the ground, connects the ground. That's when the transistor turns on there and the capacitor starts discharging. So you want it to discharge over whatever period of time is needed to reset the time that the power bank is gonna turn off. With the 100K, it was discharging too quick. So we had a fairly, you know, the, the flash was about half the time right there. But uh, then the power bank turned off, I lost power to the circuit. So I doubled that resistance pretty much and uh, that was enough right there. Maybe 150K would work, I don't know. The shorter you can make it, the better. But uh, 220K is probably about what I needed for this particular power bank. And uh, so as I said before, this power bank seems to have a longer time where uh, it can have those uh, low pulses before it will turn off other power banks, I think, like half the time. And uh, so you may need the 1 million ohm resistance to speed up how often it flashes. Um, and uh, you may be able to go even lower. You never know. So now I shut off the power. I had to actually unplug it there. I don't think you can just turn off a power bank, but uh, at least these kinds. But in any case, we have uh, again the 1000 ohm resistor from the output to the middle pin, the base of a 2N2907. As I said before, um, use one that can handle higher current and a 2N2907 can handle about 600 milliamps of current, like its NPN version, the 2N2222. They are very similar, just opposite chemistry. And uh, so higher current than 2N3906. The uh, LED here, so I call it a module, but uh, basically it's just an LED and it's wired in series with the little resistor to limit current. So it's set for five volts um, to get the maximum safe amount of current. And uh, it's on a heat sink right here. They get very hot if they stay lit for a long time. This one wasn't. I had to solder the wires on there. But uh, any case, um, when it is lit, we got about 250 milliamps of current uh, flowing through there. So probably about 20 times as much current as what I got going through the LED. So if we have it lit like 1 20th of the time, 
uh, you know, if it was lit for one second out of every 20 seconds, which may be close, it's probably using up about as much power as the LED being lit all the time. So it's wasted power. But again, the LED is now much power. This isn't much power. The 555 timer isn't using up uh, much power. These power banks would last a long time, probably like over a week we could power this circuit um, with this uh, 30 amp hour uh, battery here. That's at 3.6 volts. But uh, in any case, uh, there you can see, so high output, it's off, and so we want the charging time relatively long. And then uh, when the output is low, that connects to ground, that's when a PNP bipolar junction transistor is on. And uh, so if we were using an NPN bipolar junction transistor, we would have to wire the timing very differently. Um, so it's uh, this is simplest wiring. It's best just to use a PNP bipolar junction transistor that can handle the current of a higher current load.